Hello, I am Bones. If you installed Roblox, you might have seen this other application come with it. And not ever really touched it, but you decided to give it a go. So you went ahead and opened it. Upon opening Studio, this page here might confuse you too, but it's fairly simple. The Home tab will have all your recent places and templates. To start a place, we can simply press New Experience to create a blank map. But there are other tabs in the page we can look at first, such as Home, Experiences, and Recent Places. You can also press this icon here to change the viewing style. Let's open our first place. Good job, you made a start. I am proud of you. At first glance, you might not be sure what to do. So let's go over our movement keybinds first. Just like other games, you can move using W, A, S, and D and then pan upwards and down using Q and E. Holding right mouse you can move your camera view. And using scroll, you can move forwards and backwards. And using scroll, you can move forwards and backwards. When moving, if you hold shift you can actually move slowly for precise movement. Note, holding right click and scrolling the wheel actually changes the camera speed. Some people didn't actually know this, but in Roblox Studio, you can set custom keybinds for everything, and I mean everything. Take a look. Now, currently I am in the old UI, and you might like it. But it is inevitable that it'll have to change to the new one soon, so let me teach you the basics of the new 2025 UI. You have to enable, disable it in beta features. Wait a minute, this isn't the new Studio UI, this. This is Robuild. A Discord server where you can find open sourced assets as well as tons of skilled builders, build events such as build battles and more, open sourced resources and guides. What a cool place. Let's get back to Studio. Everything here might seem a bit scary, but let's break it down a bit. The home page is an amalgamation of all the other tabs such as the Model tab, with Tool Scales. The Geometry and Collisions portion. This part is everything in one. This part is everything in one. And finally the General Interface. Let's start with the tools up here, if you hover over them, it actually tells you what they do, and the keybind for them. Since we have a spawn part here, let's use this. The select tool is pretty simple, you can select something, and grab it, move it, do whatever to it. You can see it's moving pretty weirdly, only moving one small stud at a time. However if you hold shift, it disables snapping. You can press Ctrl R, and Ctrl T to rotate quickly. Let's move, to the move tool. Get it? Anyway, this one allows you to move the tool on the selected axis, X, Y, Z. And just like move, holding shift disables snapping. The next, big, tool is the scale tool. Ha ha. Anyway this one allows you to resize on the axis selected. Let's take a spin at the rotate tool. Maybe my true calling was a comedian. I don't actually care about this one, it's just all of them in one tool. Let me quickly go over the parts, you can click here to add a part, or press Ctrl I and type part, and enter. There are multiple types of parts on Roblox, such as spheres, wedges, cylinders, all having their own uses. Let's go on to increments. This part here decides how much a part can move at a time, for instance. It's set to one stud, let's turn it down. This is good for fine details, it's important to keep a balanced number so you don't get decimal point increments, which makes it hard to align. My rotate is set to 45, meaning it has only one increment before it does a full 90 degrees. We can change that to 15 and have more rotational points. Then we can just turn it off entirely. Which I don't recommend doing. This part here is covered in the video. But checking collisions on makes it so that in studio, a part cannot exist inside another part, let me show you.
Now it can slip right through. The next part is the joint surfaces, which when turned on, if you move the part on top of another, it will have a white outline indicating it has joined them together in studio terms, welded them. What this does is makes it act as one singular part when physics are used. I have a video up which actually covers the terrain editor. It will show up in the top right corner right now. This part is important for builders. Our colors and materials, this button here will allow you to select any material. You can also color your parts here, there is a better way to color your parts, and I will show you that later on. Pressing Ctrl D allows you to duplicate individual parts. Let's discuss grouping now quickly. Grouping a part makes it act as a singular part, selecting both at once. Now you probably saw another group there, folders. What folders do is makes it act as one group, but you can select each model group individually, this allows for it to be sorted and clean in the explorer view, I'll show you that soon. As you can see, we have our folder, let's pretend these cubes are nature assets, like trees. You can select each model group individually, but if you click the folder, it selects all of them. This is good for if you have assets all over the place, but you want them to be easily editable or changed. Let's take a look at the lock and anchor tool now. You might have noticed you can't actually select the base plate, the big grey part that is here when you start, that is because it is locked. And you can actually unlock it and select it. And just like that, you can also lock other parts to be like that, making it unselectable. Let's have a look at the anchor tool. Essentially, this makes it so that in game, a part is not affected by gravity and is locked in space. Let me demonstrate. Take that Isaac Newton. One more thing to show, the Explorer, Properties, and Toolbox. The Toolbox is just a public library where you can find, use, and publish your own assets. It's important to note that people can post unsafe models in here, so to get safe models and assets, join the Discord server below. That concludes this long chapter of the video. The next portion will be about how to use the Explorer and Properties tab. Right where we left off, you can select Explorer from this tab, as well as Properties. In Explorer, you can do things like add directly into other things by pressing this little plus sign. Or selecting and pressing Ctrl I. I'm adding a part, simply so we can take a look at its properties. Basically properties are the state of the part, meaning the color, material, where it is, what it's called, can you see it, or can you walk through it, basically a giant control panel. With the Explorer you can add more things, you can add lights, and even attachments then add lights onto that attachment to move it around. In the Properties section, here you can see a bunch of cool stuff, such as color, brick color, etc. The best way to learn this is to just go through it and press things, experiment and discover them, there's no real technique, just take a look here for yourself. It's worth noting, everything has properties, everything has something you can edit, whether it's for scripting or visual, everything is editable to some degree. I have an existing video on material variants and PBR textures, go watch that video if you want more information. You can change the reflective and transparency values, reflection makes it reflect the skybox you have, not an actual reflection. Transparency makes the part see through. Beneath here are some confusing parts, but let me make it simple for you. 
C frame means coordinate frame, X, Y, and Z. You can change the C frame position within properties. The way this works is that the workspace has our initial position of 0, 0, 0, and if you were to move it to 1, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0, it would go left or upwards. There are some syntax you can use in Explorer, and that might sound like a scary word at first. But essentially you can search for keywords or attributes a part might have, such as the transparency value, if it's anchored, what color it is. Let's make two parts and anchor one of them and search again. As you can see, it shows up with the anchored part, but not the unanchored one. This next part is going to be revolving around the model tab. We have already covered most of these so let's skip to the ones we aren't sure of yet. This version of Studio is still in beta, so expect bugs. While there are a few things here, let's focus on one thing at a time first. The first part we are discussing here is the Edit Pivot tool. How this works is you click on a part and it brings up the Move interface, but when you do it connects to these purple snap cubes. What this does is actually change the pivot point, the origin, meaning where it rotates, or places from. Here let's try rotating it. But if we want to fix that, we can press Reset Pivot. This is super helpful when importing meshes, let me show you an example. Here I'm importing a random mesh file I have, and you'll see upon importing the pivot won't be centered, but we can fix that with a single click. Just like magic. This will be the last portion of this video, we will be covering unions, if you don't know, this is similar to booleans in Blender, or even more simply, a tool you can use to cut holes from other parts. Essentially you need two parts. One is the tool, and one is the body. The tool part is the one which cuts and the body part is the one which gets cut. You can do something called negate. You have to select the tool part and then press negate, it will go transparent. From there you have to press both the tool and body part. Then press union. That is how you negate. You can also undo it by pressing separate. Pressing intersect will simply cut the median geometry, leaving you with the part that is being touched by both the tool and the body. If you paired this with both, you would get a full cube like nothing happened, but it would be able to take apart. You can also simply union two parts together, which fuses them. Normally multiple parts are scaled uniformly, meaning they don't stretch, but you can do that with unions by simply unioning, then separating. To summarize, this video you learned how to move in Roblox Studio, how to place parts, color those parts, add materials, learnt about all the tools Roblox lets you use, learnt about the Explorer, properties and interface, and even learnt how to union and negate parts. You should be very proud of yourself. That is going to be the end of this video for now. If there is any more you want to learn, let me know if I should do a second part to this, thank you, I hope you learned something new.